Yo, you already know what it is, man. It's your boy Dom Man, and look, today we're gonna be hopping back in the wreck on the two-way play sharp, my 6-4 two-way play sharp. And this is one of my favorite builds to bring into the random wreck because for one, it's a two-way, so I can play both ends of the floor. And on top of that, I got elite playmaking and elite shooting. And even though I do love this build, if I could go back and make it again, there are a few things I would do differently. Cause I made this build in like October or something like that. So you know, around that time, you're still trying to figure things out and really learn the game. But here's a quick look at what my build looks like. And as you can see, besides the finishing, the build is pretty well rounded. But like I said, if I could make it again, I'd definitely change some things up. But when I hoop on this build, I'm usually having a lot of fun and winning games. So that's why I don't really have no intentions on remaking the build right now. But I'm gonna get into the builder and show y'all what I would do differently knowing what I know now about the game. Then of course I'm gonna get into some gameplay and give y'all all the sigs and the jump shot I'm running. So we're gonna go with a point guard, 6'4", 190 on the weight, and a 6'11 wingspan. So if I wanted to make the same type of build, this is how I would make it now with the experience that I have on the game. And as you can see, right off the rip, we're a much better finisher. We even got fearless finisher on silver, but you can actually attack the rim with some confidence now, because that's one of the things about this build. Because I only have a 70 layup, sometimes I shy away from attacking the rack. And it's really fine for me because my play style is really more of like taking mid-range pull-ups and things like that. But the more options you have is always going to be the better. Now, as far as the shooting goes, I still went with the 90 midi, but I did drop the three ball from a 90 to an 86. And the thing about it is this, right? Yes, the 93 ball might open up your green window a little bit, but you're not getting any extra badges. And in my experience, bro, I shoot just as well with an 86 three ball as I do with the 90. So because I'm not getting any extra badges after 86, I'm gonna just cap it right there and save the points to put them elsewhere. Now I sacrificed a little bit on the playmaking just to make room for the physicals because one of the main things that I didn't like about my original build is the fact that I went with an 83 speed. And even though it's not horrendous, as a two-way player and on a two-way build, you wanna have that speed. It's gonna help you out on defense. It's gonna help you play lanes and things like that. And just for me and my play style and how I like to play D, I feel like I need a decent amount of speed speed on my build and 86 is like that middle ground but everything else as far as the defense and you know the strength on the build is pretty straightforward so if i were to make the build again this is what it would look like and when you go through with it you're gonna get shades of darius garland trey young kirk heinrich and the build is gonna be called a two-way diamond perimeter threat so we here in the wreck with some randoms, man. And off the rip, I noticed that this dude that I'm guarding, I think he had like a 94 or 96 still or something like that. But he's a bigger point guard. He's like a 6'8 or a Luka type of build. So when it comes to guarding those players, I press them full court. Because I know most of the time, they ain't fast enough to beat my press. And even if I do get beat, I could probably catch up. Because y'all got to remember, the build only has an 83 speed on it. So on the bigger players, I can kind of take that gamble. But on smaller and faster players, once I get beat, I'm probably done for, so I don't really take that risk. But y'all just saw in a previous play, he tried to press me full court, and he gets beat, and I go right into that midi pull-up. And that's why I be trying to tell people in the wreck, like, bro, if I'm, if I'm getting pressed, right, and I beat him, that means I need niggas to get the fuck out the way, because th cause now they're a man down, so somebody got to be open. So it should either be a pull-up jump shot or a layup for me, or somebody's man got to come over and help, and I'm going to just make the pass. Like, it's far too often where dudes are getting away with bad full-court presses because dudes don't know how to space the floor out. Niggas got to understand, like, yo, full-court pressing is for niggas who are really like that. The majority of these dudes that want to press full court every single play don't have any business doing that. So I like to make them pay for it, and it's really that simple. But right here we down one, and I'm trying to play two in the corner, but I get back to my man in time to get a good contest, and ain't nothing over there, I don't know what he's reaching at. And if you ain't equipped that Zach Levine hop jumper yet, I don't know what you waiting on, because I kid you not, I could probably put together an hour long video of me just killing dudes with Zach Levine step backs, and I'm not even hyping it. That Zach Levine hop jumper is the best hop jumper I've ever used in any 2K. But if y'all see how I'm playing in this game right here, bro, I'm not doing too much sizing up. I'm not doing too many dribble moves. Because like I said, this dude has like a 94 still or something like that. And y'all also got to remember, this build only has silver unpluckable. So if I dare put the ball on the floor against this dude, I'm probably going to get ripped. So y'all see, I'm not doing too many switching of the ball hand moves or, you know, stationary sizing up. 
I'm just trying to run around and get to spots and either get to a pull up or get to the rim. Now, if y'all recalled in previous videos, I told y'all, man, I don't like throwing these early offense long inbound like passes down the court. But that's one of the benefits of having high pass accuracy on your build. You can literally throw anything. So if your man is beating him down the court and you see it off the inbound, I'm going to just go ahead and throw it. Now against stronger competition and dudes that might hawk lanes and things like that, I'm going to be more careful and more cautious, but like I said, you just got to know who you're playing against and know what you can and can't get away with. Now right here, I'm low key open and if they would have thrown the ball earlier, I might have been able to get a shot off, but they hit me kind of late and I'm covered, so I'm just patient with the rock and I find the open man. And that's another thing I be trying to tell people about, like bro, just because you catch the ball don't mean you got to put it on the floor. Scan the floor, see what's going on, make sure you know where you want to go first before you put the ball on the floor, then make your moves. Because a lot of times, niggas just be grabbing and going and running themselves right into traffic or running into turnovers. Now right here, we down two and they inbound to my man, but I see him trying to get my man stuck over there. So I said, you know what? I'm going to switch that for you. And far too often, bro, I be in here watching dudes letting niggas get away with raps like that. Like, bro, it's so simple. It's common sense. Just switch it. I don't care if it's a random wreck or not. It's 2024 and dudes still chasing around screens and chasing on raps and shit like that. That's insane to me. I started playing this game online, like park and shit like that, in 2K18. By 2K19, I knew that chasing wasn't it. And I know for a fact that most of these dudes out here in the wreck, they've been playing this game since like 2K16, 2K17, way before me. So the fact that they don't understand these things yet is mind boggling. But as y'all can see, man, it's two minutes left in the fourth quarter and we in a two point game. Now we get this still right here and we out on the break and I see my man trying to play two in a way. But by the time he realizes he done made the wrong decision, it's way too late. And right here, I'm pressing him full court and I get him to throw a pass ahead, a scary pass. And I don't know what kind of drugs this dude is on right here, but he completely solves my stop. And then his dumb mistake leads to an easy two for them. But we still up three, so right now it's just about clock management and making sure that we just keep scoring. Now right there, I have a bad habit of kind of trapping myself towards the baseline, so I end up throwing a scary pass, but luckily we end up getting a bucket out of it. But right here we up five with 52 seconds left in the game. Now they inbound it to me, and I peeped that I got two guys around me, so I'm just patient with the ball, because that means somebody got to be open. And that's why I be trying to preach, bro. Analyze the floor, see what's going on before you start dribbling, because you're going to be putting the ball on the floor for no reason. And that's something that I had to learn myself, because yo, I ain't going to lie. I used to be a dribble head. I used to like to dribble a lot, do a lot of combos, just trying to look pretty out there. And what happens is you're doing all the moves, and you're missing wide open niggas. And the fact of the matter is, bro, nobody cares how nice your dribble combos are if you cannot see the open man so i promise you bro yeah dribbling is fun and all that we get that but if you learn how to dribble with a purpose you'll become a much more efficient player but yo i hope y'all enjoyed the gameplay and as always i appreciate all the support let me know what y'all think about the build in the comments and let me know if y'all did end up making this build because i think i dropped it back in like december or something like that so if you made the build, feel free to let me know how you've been liking it in the comments. And if you ain't following me on Twitter, be sure to give me a follow over there at BeLikeDom. And y'all already know what it is, man. Stay up. I'm going to catch y'all in the next one.